Hello. Uh, so my name is Matthew Armstrong. Um, I know the video quality isn't so good, but uh, this video is meant to be an introduction to a short course that I've just made. Um, so I'm a Celta tutor in Beijing, and um, a lot of people coming on to the Celta have a lot of trouble uh, learning the phonemic script and the phonemic chart. Uh, it's intimidating to some people. Sometimes some of these phonemes look different from uh, what uh, candidates have learned before the course. Um, so basically, I've made a short course, 14 videos long, uh, and this video is supposed to be an introduction to that short course. Um, so uh, I just want to introduce the chart briefly. And then, uh, all right, so the chart, this chart was made by Adrian Underhill. Uh, you can Google him. He's quite popular in the uh, English ELT, uh, ELT uh, community. So uh, if you look in the top left uh, area of the phonemic chart, these are all um, vowels, sit, they're monophones. Um, by themselves. Over here we have combinations of these monophones here called diphthongs. And then at the bottom we have uh, consonants. So uh, the chart is laid out uh, in a systematic way. Uh, basically if you look at my head here, um, this is the front of the chart and this is the back of the chart. So basically if you look at the vowels here, uh, this top one here is E. You notice your tongue is kind of forward a bit. Yeah, and your mouth isn't open much. E. Yeah. E. Whereas if you say this one, the same sound that's in cat. Ah. So it's ah. So we have E. Ah. See, this right here is also top to bottom. So let's look at the top real quick. E. Now look at this one, e. So if you put your finger on the tip of your tongue, e, I'm gonna say u, u back here, u, e, u. You notice your tongue pulls back. So this whole thing here is the front of the mouth, and then moves to the back. So uh, e to u. And e to o, tongue goes back. So this one must be in the middle, right? E, o, o, a, o, a. No, this one is a. Ah, sorry, a bit lower down in the mouth. Ah. Uh, so basically, mouth is open here. Then you pull your tongue back from here. Ah. Oh, ah, oh, tongue goes further back. These are combinations. Yeah, they just glide one to the next. Most of the time is on the first one. Yeah, uh, ear. Yeah. Um, some of these sounds are distinctly British. I mean, not necessarily distinctly, but in American English, we put uh, the ah. R sound with them, so we wouldn't say pure, we'd say pure. We'd just put an R, a R at the end here. Yeah. Down here we have, uh, these are all laid out nicely. So uh, this front of the back of the mouth, you think, right, the front of the mouth. So, and then the next one, uh. So if you put your hand here, then you can feel the first one is uh, not vibrating. The next one is vibrating. So the first one, b. Same pattern going all the way down. T, d, ch, j, k, g. Yeah. All of these, these ones from b, t, d, ch, j. These um, six are all called plosives. Just think of explode. There's like, a, you hold it, look at this one, you hold it, 
and then a puff of air comes out, right? Uh, same thing with this, <laughs> good, these two, yeah, these are all called plosives. Now, these two in the middle uh, are a little different because it has a plosive t and a plosive d, and then it has this next to it, which are on the bottom right here. Um, these combinations are called affricates. Uh, they just, uh, it's like you hold it just a little bit and then a little bit of pressure goes out, or a little bit of air comes out, yeah. So just think in terms of the, the top row here of the consonants, it involves holding some air and letting it go. And most of them look similar to what they sound like in English except for these two. Now the next row down is same thing. So if you, these are pairs, right? The only way that they differ is in that uh, the first one of the pair, it's not voiced, and the second pair is voiced, has the same place of articulation in the mouth. Uh, so this second row, you can hold all of them. You can hold them a long time. Right, so these are all called fricatives. Just think of friction. Hold something in your mouth together and cause friction in there, basically. Uh, so now we're getting to the bottom of the chart where things don't follow the rules so well. These three here are nasal sounds. If you try to plug your nose and make these sounds, you'll know why. Uh, just plug your nose and try to make this sound here. Mm. Yeah, you can't because the air comes out of your nose. That's why they're called nasals. This is mm, like the NG sound, like in sing. So if you wanted to write sing with the phonemic chart, you would write the s, then the i, then mm, sing, yeah? And then we have uh, this one right here. Um, the unvoiced, uh, oh, I uh, forget what that's called actually. Uh, I think it's called a lot of federal. Oh, better check that out. I will uh, post that in here. Okay, so this is a lateral. You put your tongue same position as the mm sound and you let the air go around the sides lateral. And then here we have r. Uh, yeah. These are, uh, what are these called? These approximates. Uh, that means that, so vowels have unrestricted airflow. Uh, these are like vowels, but you do restrict the air a little bit. So they're not quite consonants where you completely obstruct the flow of air. Uh, these three. So, r, w, y. These also like to jump in between words too in connected speech. Now, the purpose of this video wasn't so that you would understand uh, uh, and, well, I do want you to understand it, but um, just get familiar with it. Um, it's not, they're not alien symbols. Uh, this can be useful for you. And there's some logic behind it. So in the first lesson, we'll go through all of the similar ones for English that you would be familiar with. So these four right here. These two, these two, these two, these ones, everything on the bottom except for this one. And then introduce this one. And sorry, this one. So you have the first lesson, you have you are introduced to four foreign looking ones, and they are shh and Eh. Eh. Mm, that's it. Yeah. So, 
Uh, and then after that, after that lesson, each lesson, you are introduced to more uh, phonemes and you get constant revision as you do it. And the method is basically um, I write out the words in English, you pause the video, you try to write the phonemic script, and then I write the phonemic, you push play, and I write the phonemes, I write, I write the phonemic script out, and then you check your work with mine. My work might not be 100% correct. I didn't check the dictionary. I'm using myself as a model, how I would say the words, and how I'm perceiving the sounds. And it's not about getting it dictionary perfect or anything like that. It's about uh, raising your awareness with phonemic script so that you can use it on the spot in class. Uh, so uh, I hope that you do take the first lesson and you better, you better pause the video and actually write the phonemic script out or you're just cheating yourself. All right, thanks for watching this far.